Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Hi, I'm glad you could stop into my kitchen. Today I want to show you how to make a pot roast. So, we all remember mom that used to make pot roast with the Lipton onion soup. Well, if you don't have that or don't want to buy that, I'm going to show you how to do it the easy way with ingredients you probably have in your cupboard. So, to start with, you should be making it with, I think the best is a chuck roast. And the reason I say chuck roast is because it has fat, it's nicely marbleized, and fat is flavor. This is going to be, um, this piece weighs about two and a half pounds, and it's going to be braised in this pot, in the oven, though you could do it on the stove, for a good two and a half to three hours. And all this fat's going to break down and help tenderize this pretty thick cut of meat. Now having said that, there was a deal, oddly enough, my sister brought this up Oh, about a week ago. Hey, Di, I want to make a pot roast. My sister doesn't cook at all. We had a restaurant together. She was front of the house. I was back of the house. Having said that, she knows what it should be, but she doesn't execute the cooking. So I said, okay, that's a good idea. We were invited out the next night to a wonderful dinner. And amongst one of the four courses was also a nice slice of pot roast that the chef had done, she cut these into individual pieces before she braised it, which was pretty good, brilliant because you want to braise these until this is pretty tender. If you don't cut it first, it'll probably fall apart. So that was pretty good. Anyway, it was a really tasty cut. Then you want to use, I like to use the heaviest bottom pan you can get your hands on because the heaviest bottom pan, if you want to simmer it on the stove, then it won't burn or put it in the oven and it's it just makes for a much nicer uniform cook you could do this in your crock pot too but i can't really speak about crock pot because i've never really cooked in one because i'm a cook what you want to do to start with i have this over a medium heat and i am going to salt and pepper this pretty heavy I'm using kosher salt because I like kosher salt. It comes off your hands easy. If you slip with kosher salt, it's not as bad as slipping with Morton's iodized salt. Plus, I just don't like the flavor of that salt. This is much cleaner. Anyway, so we have the salt. I like fresh cracked pepper. I'm a, I use fresh, I don't care if I'm cooking for two people or a hundred people, fresh cracked pepper. It just is so much better and it really doesn't take that much. Now, I am kind of a fanatic about not having to clean up too much. So if you notice, I just unwrapped this and left it on the paper that the butcher, well, I'm not gonna say he's a butcher, but whatever, the meat counter had put this in and now I don't have a mess all over the counter salt and pepper everywhere. We're going to put a little oil in the pan. I use a lot of olive oil so that's what I happen to have. However, if all you have is some kind of canola, safflower, peanut would be good. You just want a couple tablespoons in the bottom of the pan, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. And then in goes the pot roast. Now that we're done with this, and take note of the weight because you can sort of judge by the weight of your piece of meat how long it's going to take. This was two and a half pounds. I like to let it go, you know, a half hour-ish a pound. The nice thing about Lipton onion soup mix is it's in a packet. They're dehydrated onions. You put it in the foil pan. Add a little water, I think, is what Mom did. Seal up the foil and put it in the oven. But a fresh onion so much better. Now, it really does not take that much time to do. So, what you want to do with a fresh onion, and this can be done while you're waiting for the meat to brown. And you're going to take both ends off, is take the tip of a knife. You want to get this root end off. And 
take the tip of the knife, a paring knife, something that fits your hand, stick it into that root end, and turn the onion. I put my thumb over the root end and turn the onion around the knife. Not the other way around. Not the knife around the onion. Turn the onion around the knife. I'll show you again on this end. doesn't really need it, but it will do it anyway. Turn the onion. And that works well when you're peeling apples in the fall. And it works well on a lot of things, so that's a good little trick to know. So cut your onion in half. And this was, like I said, a two and a half pound piece. So I'm gonna do a couple of onions. I kind of like onions, like a lot. And it's a nice flavor, plus this is going to make a really good sauce when we're all done. At the end, after everything is said and done, I'm going to use an immersion blender to puree the onions with all the seasonings and the braising liquid. And it's a really excellent, excellent sauce. Having said that, this is the easiest way to cut an onion. You want to cut it in half and then it doesn't really make any difference. It doesn't have to be that uniform, but it's easy to slice this way half and then the long way. Make a pile of that. As you can see, this has a nice color on the bottom and it's nicely golden brown so I'm going to turn this over. Now I don't want to put these onions in any too soon. If you put the onions in while this is browning, what's going to happen is it will make the meat sweat before it browns because of the water content in an onion. So as soon as these, as soon as this side browns, we're gonna pull it out, put it on the, just put it aside. I'm gonna add the onions and the rest of my seasonings. And the seasonings that go well with beef, in my opinion, uh, is thyme, either fresh, where you strip the leaves off the stem and chop them up. Or rosemary, again, leaves off the stems, chop them up a little bit. Sage works well with meat. And then other seasonings, garlic is wonderful. You know what I'll do while we're waiting for this to brown, I'll show you the garlic. Easiest way to do the garlic, because that can go in with the onions, but on top of the onions because you don't want the, uh, the garlic to burn, you want the garlic to soften with the onions. If you put it in the bottom of the pan, the garlic will burn, then you have a bitter flavor, flavor braising liquid. So you just gently crush it, take the outer skin off. Now, there's no set rule on how much garlic to use. I happen to like garlic a lot. So having said that, I tend to put quite a bit in. So I'm going to use for this two and a half pound piece, three really nice decent sized pieces of garlic. Now because this is going to be pureed with, a, with an immersion blender to make the sauce for it, I'm not going to get too funny about mincing it. Uh, but I don't want to put it in whole because I do want a little bit more flavor. The smaller you go with the garlic, for instance, if you use a garlic press or mincing it as opposed to throwing a whole clove in, the more flavor you will get out of the clove. All right, so let's see what's going on with this beef. Could be about time for this to come out. All right, so this beef is really nicely brown. You can see... It's browned well on both sides, and I even did the sides. Now into the pan went the onions and the garlic, and I put one strip of, and I'm going to put one more in, just the top part of a strip of orange peel. And the orange adds a nice citrus note. It's really quite tasty. The onions are browning nicely. Now you notice I didn't add any flour to this. You don't really have to because the sauce is going to be thickened
from its own juices and the puree of the onions. So if you wanted to, you could dust it with a little flour, but I don't think it's really necessary. And now the seasonings. I'm going to use just a touch of some chili powder, not a lot, probably about a quarter of a teaspoon for this size piece. I'm going to use about a teaspoon of thyme and rosemary. I love rosemary. If you happen to have fresh, that's always good too. But one thing about rosemary is whether it's dried or fresh, you want to crumble it in your hands a bit. You know, one of the, well, I used rosemary a lot in the restaurant and I always crumbled it, but the, a comment that would come up all the time was, well, I don't like rosemary because it tastes like pine needles. Well, that's because it really needs to be broken down in size a little bit. If you're using fresh rosemary, you might mince it a little bit before you put it in the pot. But anyway, so far those are going in the pot. Now, if you happen to find some, I really like using this. Again, it's not necessary, but it just adds a little depth of flavor. It's some Spanish smoked paprika and just a touch, about a quarter teaspoon, that's it. Because you just want a tiny bit of flavor from that. Also, what I'm going to add is a couple tablespoons of tomato paste. And you don't have to, you could add pureed tomato, but that's not necessary either. Then, after this cooks down a little bit, stir your seasonings in. Then you want to splash it with the alcohol of your choice, whether that be brandy, red wine, and in my case I'm using port. So I'm going to put in about a half a cup of port, and you could put in a cup or two of wine, whatever you happen to be drinking that night. And then we're going to stir that around and let the alcohol cook out of that. Then, you want to put in a little beef broth. So, here's the story with beef broth. You can go buy in the store those little, uh, like, milk containers that have beef broth. However, me, myself, and I, I'm not really fond of hauling water around. So, I buy beef base. You can buy uh, bouillon cubes or just beef base. And then you can add your own water and you get a lot of bang for the buck with this stuff. You don't really have to refrigerate it, so it doesn't take too much refrigerator space, and it lasts for a long time. Now, the one thing I will say with beef base, chicken base, vegetable base, I mean, there is quite a bit of salt in that, so you don't want to overload whatever you're making with additional salt until you taste it. If you wanted to make a straight beef broth for soup, there's instructions on the side of the container. It's usually about a tablespoon to a gallon. So you can see, hard to see in this pan, I can tilt a little bit, how nice and brown this is. The onions have browned, the tomato paste adds a bit of color. Now, because I use the base, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this. And this is a quart, so what are we putting in here? About uh, three cups or so. I wanna clean my spoon and then bring this back up to a boil. We're going to put the meat with the juice that has run off of it back in the pot and then we're going to cover it up and put it in the oven. But you can see there's a little bit of juice that came from it sitting. So that definitely you don't want to throw that out. I put in enough liquid to come just up to the sides of, and it's kind of hard to see if I tilt this too much, it won't work, but just up to the sides of the meat, that's it. And that'll be plenty of braising liquid. I swirl this around a little bit. You know, you could add mushrooms to this if you want. Now, if you're gonna add vegetables, if you want to turn this into a beef stew, what you want to do is, Add the vegetables like the last 45 minutes to an hour, potatoes and carrots, what have you. Peas are always good in this. You know, that's a completely dish all together, but it is good. Okay, one last thing that I want to add is a couple of bay leaves. 
around the pot evenly and bay adds a nice flavor. You don't have to add it, but it really does. And these are sort of stock ingredients that you might want to have in your cupboard all the time because if you cook, you'll want these always on hand. And what I'm going to do is put the lid on this and it's going to go to the oven, though I could do it on my stovetop, the oven's just easier. And the oven produces a nice well-rounded heat all the way around top to bottom, bottom to top. Less chance of anything burning on the bottom if you don't have a real heavy pan. But I will say it will burn on the bottom too if you don't adjust the heat right. But the oven just takes care of all that. So it's going to go in the oven for probably about three hours. Well, it's been about two and a half hours and we have the chuck roast out of the oven. The next phase is taking this out of the pot. Then, as you can see, inside the pot, it's a little warm, is all this, whoops, that's hot, that's too hot, is a little bit of fat, but all of the liquid has reduced quite a bit. Now what I want to pull out of here, I don't want to puree the orange peel because that's going to be a little bit too much. I don't want to puree the bay leaf so it's good to know how many bay leaves you put in to know how many you need to be taking out. Before I thin this out, I want to puree this with this handy gadget. I just love this immersion blender. Now, this has become a really beautiful sauce slash gravy. So we don't need that anymore. Now what I'm going to do is take the silicone spatula, because this is still hot, and all of the stuff that's around the side of the pan, I want to use the sauce that's pureed to get this off of the pan because it's going to do double duty. One, it's going to clean the pan. Two, it is going to add a lot more flavor to this sauce. So all you do is take this up the side of the pan like this and rub the sauce around the edge and it all comes off and flavor. However, let's taste it. Wow, it's really good. That little hint of orange peel is just perfect in here. The nice thing about pot roast is you make it the day before and then you can warm it up the next day and it's actually quite a bit better. So here we have this wonderful sauce that I will spoon a little bit over the top and then serve some on the side because I think the way to go with this, everybody loves sauce, myself included, and since this is so pretty and it didn't make that much, but just enough. We'll just put a little bit and see how nice and thick this is without adding any flour whatsoever. But isn't this just gorgeous? So I'm gonna have to find a little greenery, we need a little parsley in here, but actually what I have are the green beans that I did in a separate video that can be served alongside of these. So if this were the summer, I probably wouldn't be making pot roast, but if I were in the spring, then I would probably go out to the garden and go pick some fresh flat leaf parsley and and there you have a really lovely looking pot roast that is fork tender. So I think we should try some, don't you? Now I have some mashed potatoes that this can also go on top of. And so mashed potatoes, or if you had taken the last half hour, 45 minutes of the cooking liquid and put in some potatoes or carrots, that would have been really good too. So, let's take a little chunk of this 
and a little bit of green bean just for a taster and see how we did. Oh, fork tender. Look at this. It's just beyond fork tender. Mm. Excellent. You know, I only put about, about three quarters of a cup of port in this. I used a Salmon Founders Reserve Port. It was a little pricey, but I live out in the country, so it was either this or total junk port, which I just can't do. So this Salmon Reserve made a great sauce. Then, like I say, it only took about three quarters of a cup. And for this size pot roast, this is good for, for sure, four to six people. And you have a lovely lovely dinner put on top of some mashed potatoes we'll come back with that but isn't this sauce just divine looking nice and rich and creamy with no flour and very little fat because i only used a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan to brown the meat in mm -hmm. that is really good now if you'd like to make this, I'll have a recipe on the website. I also have a cookbook up on Amazon, Sid and Diane's Incredible Recipes, that this one isn't in, but I'm working on one over the winter, and you might take a look. So I have tons of recipes that I've written for myself and others, and I'm going to do a second edition of the cookbook coming right up. I will put that link at the end of this video. So enjoy that, and thanks for tuning into my station. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think.